Hello and welcome to Wrestling in Mom's Basement. This is giving me the review for Fire Fest 2019. I, of course, am Patrick Young. This gentleman to my right is my co-host, Joe Benito. Uh, the bio the bio for Fire Fest kicked off with uh, best friends to VSCU and private party to advance the oil for the tag match. We're the winner of that tag match at oil. <laughs> Receives a bye in the tournament for the tag team titles. Yeah. I think I said that. Uh, uh, yeah, this was a really good opener. Yeah. Uh, it really delivered with getting the crowd very excited for the rest of the show. Uh, private party looked extreme, extremely good here. Uh, it was definitely a star-making performance for them. Uh, and it's also interesting to see where the best friends are going to go uh, in, in this tournament. Uh, you also had SU who... Let's face it, SCU is pretty awesome. And just to clarify, I see I don't think Pride Part and SCU are eliminated from the tournament. No. No, no it, it's it really... was a match to get to the bye. Yeah. It was a match to win a match to get to the bye. Yeah. They gotta win all match before they get a bye. Mm -hmm. right. uh, however, everyone went in there looking, everyone came out of there looking better than they did going into it, so good yeah. stuff all around. Yeah, it was a really good over. It was an all actual layout to kick things off, and everyone did time to shine Pride Party in person in their debut. I gave it an A minus. Uh, B plus. Uh, up next, Alley defeat Le Leva Base. Was uh, versus just Kylie Ray, but she wasn't there for. I don't think they explained why she wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it turned out to be Alley in her video. Uh, yeah, it was probably just so they got Alley to do something before her and um, Brandy. That was no, probably just for Daryl being Alley's debut. Probably, yeah. Uh, uh, they probably want to get her a win. <laughs> Yeah, this this one literally you could have cut maybe ten minutes from, uh, especially ten minutes of offense from uh, Leva. Yeah. Uh, she, I remember her doing okay in her squash matches in NXT. Uh, this is the first time I've actually seen her in a match. No, yeah. Where she's on offense. Exactly. Uh, apparently she she could be better as blue pants than the librarian. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the gimmick plays off well in a big arena. No. Uh, well, I don't think it plays off that well at all in, in the big arena. Uh, it's probably something that should maybe stay on being the elite and they can have fun with it there. Uh, but yeah, there, there was a lot of this match that just didn't work, was slow, and felt way, 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 way too long. Yeah, uh, there were parts where it was okay. Uh, but that was part of slow and destroying it with Leva control way too much. And it came off as a really poor debut for Allie due to that. Allie didn't do nothing wrong. Yeah. My grace more because uh, of Leva than Allie. And, and like I said, AEW should never have Leva wrestle again. Uh, she was being here and the gimmick sucked. <laughs> uh, D. D. Uh, I'm next. Michael Mockers Allie defeat. I can't pronounce his last name. Allie should be able to. No, I don't ever see it. The, the, the convention. Wait, whose name are you can pronounce? The, the owner. Oh, Alex Jabali. Alex Jabali. Yeah. Yeah, Alex Jabali in the street. Adolfo Spartan. In the thong match. Yeah. And the thong match. <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is probably as well as <laughs> yeah. it could have gone. Uh, Alex, Alex Jabali, who I guess had some basic training stuff, the where bell. he pretty much didn't necessarily hurt himself on a bump. Right. Uh... But other than that, it was pretty much a comedy match and was, was designed as such and didn't necessarily uh, go under my expectations for the match. So This match is getting great higher than the previous match because number one, it was shockingly okay for Saren. And the crowd too liked it. Yeah. And Alex did well for himself, all things considered. <laughs> D plus. D plus. By the way, just to clarify, the women's match, the, the, the previous match was on worst match ever. Yeah, same here. Ah. Uh, 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 my, my best match of the night actually already happened too. I gave the the triple threat tag team match best match of the night, in my opinion. Uh, take off the main show. Seema defeated Daniels and the Uh Yeah, I thought this match was exactly what it needed to be. Uh, it showed off Seema enough for for his next match coming up against uh, Kenny Omega. And uh, Daniels put in a solid performance here. Yeah, it was a good match between two established events. With the right man winning, I pass that Sima faces are uh, kind of mega next week at Flight Forward Fall. Yeah. So. I gave it a B minus. B. Uh, up next, Rio defeat 
Not a rose and there we go. You can suck a sock pee, I think. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. Let's like, see. And for it, like. Sakazaki. So a Sakazaki? Yeah. Oh, not Saka Saka Saki? No. <laughs> you can suck a sock pee. Right, uh, right. Yeah. Not Sakasaki. No. I have one three sockets. Yes. <laughs> ah. uh, yeah, I really, I really like this match. Uh, to me, it was actually my second favorite match in the night. Uh, yeah. I thought all three girls looked pretty good, uh, and more importantly, I thought Nyla looked good and and dominant this match. Uh, however, I do have a negative towards this match. I don't know why Nyla didn't win and also took the pin. Mm. Uh, I think she needed a win, especially after Double or Nothing, where she got little to no focus and was pretty much overshadowed by Awesome Cop. Uh, and if so, I, I don't necessarily think she should have taken the pin here, especially when they're telling the story of Yuka and Rio anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I so I think that was my that was my negative part of the match, but I thought uh, Nyla did look good in the match. Uh, Rio. I believe is the one they're trying to push to the star. That's why we're going to need to win people. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because most of us have picked her. They know what they're doing. Anyway. I did know. <laughs> anyway, she she's their star, so she probably should be picking up wins. She did. She helped push me back to just on down by one. I just don't think she should have gotten the roll-up one over Nyla. She probably should have gotten a clean win over Yuka. Saka Saka. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. But she needed to win. If you're going to push her, she needs to win. Because she got me back. She's one of the ones that helped me to just... Come on, freaking bitch. He's not, he's not holding on to that. <laughs> that that margin. By the way, last year I was down by like this so much. At this point already. Behind both of those ladies. Now, I'm, now, that, now that the main two are just doing it. I'm like... I haven't taken a lead yet, but I've been like neck and either tied. Or just right on his teal. He's all third. He's all friend. However, this okay. may have actually been the best I've done so far on an AEW yeah, yeah, All In yeah. pay per view. Right. Well, we got one next week. Actually, we got we got two shows next week. Yeah. Where you can feel. Ah, uh, I actually become the the interim champion for the first time. We have two shows next week. All oh, right, because AEW is on on next week too. What's the second show? Oh yeah, I sure will say. Ah. Yeah, I thought it was, a, it, it, it was good in a lot of C1, Brighton. It was very unexpected, though. Uh, both had Nyla playing a really neat, good performance. So should have not won, but should have not gotten pinned. Yeah. But she did. The positive is that she needed a really good performance. It could be another shot by Kong. And I also feel that she had the best performance out of all three so, uh, in that match. Yeah. I gave it a B. Plus. B. Uh, up next, Jaime Page defeated Jungle Boy, MJF, and Jimmy Havoc. And it failed for that. Uh, yeah, I thought this match was good. Uh, no, it wasn't necessarily, it didn't necessarily blow me away, but I, I don't think it was necessarily designed to do that. Uh, the show wasn't meant to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Page gets the win because, duh, he's challenging. Yeah, he's challenging. However, it is weird that this match was literally. <laughs> Set up so he, someone can fight Kip Sabian the next time around. Right. That fight for full. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't forget that himself. So. Yeah, it, it was very good fun match. Page Retainer, man, at MJF and Jungle Boy got to shine. I will say they didn't do a lot for Jimmy Havoc though, to really shine in no, the match. And he's on to the, Yeah, he took the full too. So. Uh and side and also on Jungle Boy, I do love the Jungle Boy Lucius Swerves pair in yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, B minus. I uh, B. Uh, next, Cody and Darby Allen went. Uh, I can't call him Darby Allen. That's the first time I actually got his name correct. Darby <laughs> Allen <laughs> went to a tournament. Went to a tournament time limit draw. Uh, yeah, I, I did like this match. Um, I like that it made Allen look good by staying in the ring with Cody for twenty minutes. And not getting dis uh, decidedly uh, get a decided loss in this match, uh, and, and I think it makes him look good, which is the main part of why, what I wanted out of this match. Uh, and Cody also seems to be working very well 
in AEW style that they're that they're creating. You took my second sentence. Uh, he delivered. He he over delivered. I, I think uh, with him and Dustin. Yes. Uh, everyone thought it was gonna be good, but I don't think anyone expected it to be that good. Uh, and this one, I I thought he told a great story with Darby in this one. Uh, I do also have. I do have a problem with the match. Uh, it seemed like there were parts in there that this match drug a little bit. Uh, no, I don't think nobody's on drugs. No, no, I'm not saying anybody was on drugs. I'm saying there were parts of this match that probably could have been shorter or cut out a little bit. Oh, okay, I thought you said it was uh, drugs. However, they, they did recover from them nicely with uh, Alan taking some pretty hard bumps. The Colt. The, uh, the coffin dropped to the outside. Yeah. It, which even, was planned. I swear that repo shot was not planned out. It, yeah. I, Clint <laughs> Oleg was trying to catch himself in the ropes, but I said, it looked nice. Yeah. And, but he you know, like went back first through. Cody blonde bar him. Yeah. Back first in the middle of the rope. And his back spun off the pole. Yeah. And it also sets Cody up nicely uh, right, right afterwards with a uh, feud with. The former Ty Jones or Sean Spears? Uh, I think I have in terms of the ring work only, and I was just saying that into account. The same Bree as Pat about, I do. But there's a lot of outside factors for me at the old matches before they have, which puts us a step higher. I, I thought number one JR was really great here. I, I will admit that one. I thought he was. Put over, he was put over Darby on almost like a Mick Foley like level. Yeah. Like he used to do on Raw. I'm all about AEW code, so working these composed matches. With race stories and leaving the circus at home. Uh, that's how I used to call his Ring of Honor matches. Uh, yeah. Normally he would have the circus. It Bells would, and whistles in the circus. It would be Brandy, it would be the rest of the elite of the Bullet Claw. <laughs> Stolen on the outside. Uh, so I thought that was really great with that. Uh, Cody Cole, great match. The timing for the most part came off well. The worst times where I did drag. But, and I did love the finish that protects Darby that basically looks like a player. And keeps Cody on the feed too. Hey, into the next show, I guess the Bucks. And it says an angle with Sean Spears. I also love them establishing Drill so as a viable finisher early on. Because, as this was the perfect time to use it. The only fear is, the only fear I do have is that the Sh Sean Spears angle will be remembered more than Darby's performance. That's not, that, yeah. that was my main fear. Mm hmm. Uh, I give the match a B. A hey, minus. Uh, I'll max the elite. Uh, can I make a Mick? Not, not Mick. Mike. Who the hell's Mike? Matt and Nick Jackson. Damn, I'm going to go box. There we go. I was going to say King Matt and Nick, but I had Mick fully saw my mind. Uh, the feed, the Lucha Brothers, and the Lurie of It was six match. Uh, I, I, did, I did like this match. However, it didn't necessarily feel any different from any other Young Buck slash elite, elite match that they've, ha that they've had as a team going against another team. Uh, yeah, there were cool spots in there. There there was some fun stuff. But I think overall you, you kinda you kind of got what you expected from it. Uh, I, again it, it was good. Uh, it I just maybe I was expecting a little bit more than I wanted to. Than I mean, yeah, so. Ah uh, it was great. <laughs> and exactly the match I expected. But more importantly, exactly the match I won from the six. Uh, it was a great high octane sprint with a lot of great moves and a tremendous pace, and everyone looked great. The crowd loved it, and more importantly, Lorio Kid, if you stick around, got to shine from the big boys the most. Not very much. So it was also completely different from everything else on the show, even though it wasn't anything revolutionary. So it sticks out and did its job. I gave it a D. A, but the real match I like. You almost feel it. I, I, I didn't almost fail. You gave it a B. In, in AEW land, that's a failure. No, it's not. Oh, sorry. It would be a failure on NXT, but... Right, so it, it gets an A because it was exactly what I expected. But more importantly, it's exactly what I wanted. I didn't want... No, I could... One, one big thing is... No, I will say that I didn't say... Where the fuck was the 10 count? <laughs> No, I don't mean that, I don't mean outside. I told them about their rule that they established a double or nothing. The the tag team actually just have a ten kill. Cause towards the end of the match, I think it was Omega and Lorraine Kid. I was confused it was legal of 
I got lost on Grizzly Dog. I, th I think they're sort of looking past that as a, as the rules are a referee's discretion. Because <laughs> oh, cool. in the middle of the Cody and uh, Darby Allen match, Cody started whipping Darby with his uh, weightlifting belt. Hulk Hogan whipped Darby with his belt. Yeah. Face or heel. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Which, e even if it's a belt, you're not supposed to actually do that in a match. Technically, it's not really a foreign object. It's only a tire. Ah! Uh it's part of his attire. Just like Bianca's hero is not a weapon because it's part of her. Hogan Cody's well, belt is a part of him. However, you could take off your belt. And believe you can't me, necessarily Bianca take off your could, hair. Bianca could. <laughs> okay, yeah, probably, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going there. Let me stop you. Bianca could. All right, fine. <laughs> that's not her real hair. However, that's an article of clothing. So is Bianca's hair. <laughs> No, that's her hair. No, it's, it's her <laughs> It's a weave! Uh, a. Uh, uh, B. We did that already. Right okay. Uh, and the main event, John Moxley defeated uh, Joe Janela and, and Shreve. Uh, uh, no, it's actually a match for By the way, nice touch beforehand. Yeah. With the lights out, and that Justin Roberts saying it's the, the last. Not the six man time was the last official match. Yeah. By AEW. Spots sanctioned. The, yeah, the main event already happened. Yeah. And you're getting the unsanctioned match now. Right. Uh, yeah, I thought this match was good. I thought it was very brutal, uh, pretty violent. Uh, to be fair, it's probably also tame for what these two could actually do with each other. Yeah. Uh, which I, I don't. I don't want them to go on the same with late tubes and stuff like that. No. Uh, but to me, I think there were. There were dips in, like, in between the vicious spots. There were brutal spots. There were moments of cringe. But I think, to me, there was a little bit more of dips in there, in between each spot, than I wanted there to be. Uh, overall, a very good match, though. Very brutal, and both guys seemed pretty motivated. Yeah, I, I did think it was a great main event. Uh, they played the assimilation well enough. They delivered on the promise finals. So it was simply going crazy. Was what it needed to be. Yeah. There wasn't a there was a major story. Big time going into that show. Uh, so it was a good main event. It plays in the simulation well. I delivered on a promise finalist. It was like I said, simply going crazy. Uh, I gave it a B plus. Uh, a minus. Overall. Uh, overall, I'm giving the whole show a B plus. Uh, how the fuck do I give it a lower grade? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you can't. If I have three bringing... matches in the A to A minus range, and there were three main matches, I'm not sure how that all works. I'll be back. <laughs> Continue. Uh, overall, I did really enjoy the show. Uh, A minus. It was it was easy to watch. Uh, it was easy to sit through, uh, and the matches I I all enjoyed. Uh, most of my negatives for the matches are nitpicky in each match. Uh, Minus uh, the two buy-in clunkers. Yeah. Well, the one most of this stuff. Exactly. Uh, neither one should be put on TV. Once they debut on TV. Yeah. Uh, uh, but overall, the show was highly enjoyable. Uh, the show, I, to me, it seemed a little less unimportant. More like how Double or Nothing was more like a Starcade or a Halloween Havoc. It was free. Exactly. Technically, I'm not even sure if this counts towards our pay-per-views because it's not really pay-per-view. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying like how Double or Nothing's more like a Halloween hat. Well, probably more like a Halloween Havoc, and all well, else going to be like their Starcade. This one's more like a uh, not an A Champions, Clash of Champions. Yeah, I also had two buy-in clunkers. Fire Fest was a really good set, especially for a free and free in the U.S. Ah. That actually was... Sorry, internet. <laughs> Sorry, international watchers of our show. Uh, the action was mostly good and consistent. The right talents got to shine. The right talents went over. Sorry, Nyla. It wasn't your time yet. Uh... The money match for her is awesome, Colin. Right, well, I don't necessarily think she should be taking fluky-ass losses. She shouldn't be losing. She shouldn't be. I agree with that, but it wasn't her time to win. If Rhea is going to be one of the stars prior for the woman's title, that... That they're presenting all the way out. I'm guessing right now it would be Rio and Britt. Brand and Britt, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the right challenge went over. I didn't say the right challenge took the pins. The right challenge went over. 
because obviously it went over because I went on the field and for the most part nice to draw. Uh so obviously the right counts went over. Mm -hmm. Um I won't feel so the right counts went over. And I performed better in an AEW pay-per-view than I have been, so. And the closing stress matches were all great for actually different reasons. Uh now we're riding top matches delivered and it's so uh, I really hope the shit's to see, so a minus. Not the BI I originally gave. <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know why he gave the B. <laughs> I, don't know, you I mean, I graded matches lower, but... Yeah, but you told me you feel the show horribly. I didn't feel the show horribly. Yeah, so you told me. Uh, up next, my next clunker. I mean, uh, my King of Rain 2002. See you then. See you then.